What it is, people? It's your boy Doggy Dom. It's another episode of Doggy Dom's No Filter. Today, I got a special, special guest with me tonight. Introduce yourself to the people. I don't know where the special come in. You special? Do I wear? A, do I ride on a yellow bus or something like nah, that? Nah, nah, you special. No, this yeah. Big Gene. You Gene Deal from Raw Deal, the last big night, the Uncle Gene Show on okay. YouTube. Okay. And the, and the, what's the other? That's the name of the cooking show. Yeah. Okay. Cooking and conversation. Cooking and conversation. How long you been cooking? Well. You don't want to give your age away. Yeah, you I don't care. All my life, man. Okay. Ever since, you know, um, since I was about 14, 15 years old. Learning. That, that probably got you a lot of chicks cooking, right? No. What got me a lot of chicks was I played basketball. Oh. And my mother was the uh, librarian. And she worked as the home ec instructor at the high school. You know, home ec don't exist anymore, right? Yeah, it don't yeah, exist. They took, but they tell tell them it. what home ec is, though. That People need <laughs> home ec. Home ec is, is a class where they teach you how to cook. They teach you how to sew. They teach you how to do the normal and the not clean houses, clean things up. Uh, just teach you how to take care of yourself in your household. Yeah, it used to be called home economics. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, where you went to school at? Uh, I went to college at the university. I finished at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Mm. Played with New York, uh, Gerald Wilkins, who played for the New oh, York wow. Knicks. Yeah. Dominique brother. Yes, sir. Yeah. What he was on the Knicks, number 50? He was number 21. Same, 21, yeah, same, you're same right. Same right. uh, Dominique. Of, that was Greg Anthony. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so you you talking about, uh, y'all played in um, college together? Yeah, college together. Wow, wow. What position you played? Small forward. How tall you got? How tall are you? I was 6'7". Damn, small forwards are they like six nine now, right? Yeah, six nine, six ten. Yeah, cause yeah. cause of they changed the the positions how because point guards used to be like six feet. The uh, anywhere from five eight, six, yeah. five eight to six one. You had a, that's a big part point guard. You had him at six one, six two. And Mag, that's what made Magic so special, right? Because he was six nine point guard. Right. But the, what what actually changes the dimension, the body dimension of, mm. of of the NBA. You got guys in the NBA like um, just look at the guy, the kid now that's from Duke, Zion, Zion, Zion Williams. Williams. Yeah. Look at his body structure. Yeah. His body structure it is how the guys in the eighties yeah. and, and the nineties used to play. Mm -hmm. Now you get uh, uh, these forwards and things like that. They're about what, 210, 610, mm -hmm. 611, 210, soaking wet. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't have that body structure like that. It used to be big back then. That's Wide like, body. That was the um like the Kevin Durant's and and them that came and they was just mad linky, right? right. Like yeah. But yeah. they but they be playing power forward though. But they just they don't have the size. They don't yeah, got some so. Kevin McHale, you know, Kevin McHale's shoulders was on some Yeah, but you don't put body on them no more. Yeah, got you. You, know you, you got to yeah, back can. in the eighties they was hand checking and you could put the forearm on the guy and uh, hold him down or play tight like that with him. Was you good at, at, in the game? Well, listen, you could pull it up. Oh, right? I was all right. Okay. What's, I, that, what's the most points you scored in the game? The most points I ever scored in the game was in college was 24. Mm. Yeah. And, and uh, was you the small forward? Was you the rebound the small forward or was you more like a passer? They, they ran the uh, – Play through me. Got you. So I did the rebound fast, and you know, yeah. Joe Wilkin was a nut. You see how he played on yeah, the Knicks. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to the I'm going to the board to get the rebound. Yeah, yeah. Nine yeah. times out of ten, he gonna hit a miss. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm about to say I was cherry picking the whole time with him yeah, too. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. yeah, yeah. So um, you 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 go you play high school basketball, college basketball. Mm -hmm. Why you didn't go to the NBA? Uh, two reasons. My senior year, I got blackballed. Okay. If you see, uh, Gene Barto did an article saying I was probably one of the best unknown small forwards when we was playing against them in one of their tournaments. Mm. Um, what happens is that everybody can't make it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that if I would have went to the camps and did what I started to do, I would have, but I was more interested in getting my degree. That was one. And two, I didn't have an interest to play ball at the college that much. I was going to go overseas just for the you know, hell of it, mm -hmm. to say I went overseas and everything like that. So uh, Jackie Knowles, he's a New York native. He was going to be my agent. Mm -hmm. And I was up there playing with Chris Washburn, the McCrades. We used to be on 181st and Park Avenue mm -hmm. up in the Bronx. 
they called it used to be midnight basketball with number of pros and semi pros and people who was going overseas. Mm -hmm. So they had me uh, scheduled to go overseas, and then I tore my knee up. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, I don't want to do it. The doctor told me back then that if I continued to play basketball, I wouldn't be walking when I'm 50. So now the type of injury that you had, if you had that injury now, they would clean that up. Yeah, they would clean that up. Yeah, yeah. Because back then, the dude uh, towards Achilles, his career was over. Right. Even even at one point, um, you know, baseball players, the Tommy John surgery, he was the first person to have that type of surgery on right. your arm. If you tore a ligament at one point, your career was over. Correct. You know, now 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 they fixed. You ever did the record before? Yeah, was, come okay. on, man. I ran the. F we we won the first entertainers classic at the mm. Rucker. I played with the Cardiac Kids. That was um, um, uh, it was a who was the guy? Jr. It was me, Jr. Trent. It was a couple of other people. We played with the Cardiac Kids, and we won the first entertainers classic. That wasn't the EBC, right? Or the same thing? Okay, let's try it again. We played. We won the first entertainers classes. That's, that's, EBC okay, entertainers right, yeah, yeah, basketball right, right, classes. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. I thought it was a, I, had, <laughs> I had to figure it out. The EBC. Yeah. Um. So, did you lose your love for basketball as you grow, or do you still go out there every now and again and play? No, I can't play. Not okay. at all. No, no, no. I've, it's wrestling, fighting, car accidents, and all that stuff like that. Took on my toll back on of, you. Yeah, it took gotcha. a toll on you, man, like that. Got you. So you know, I, I was in Sue's for 10 years. <laughs> you said you was what? We was at Sue's Rendezvous for 10 years. Oh, damn. So damn, enough man. said behind that. <laughs> damn. So um, you, you didn't do the, the NBA thing. So when, when you graduated college and you're not going to the NBA, what did you want to do? Uh, my aspiration was to basically write something that would change young guys' minds and young guys' thoughts and thinking about being in the ghetto and thinking that we we don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have a chance in life, which, you know, I prove that you do have a chance is what you put into it, mm. no matter where you came from. Because you're, cause you're, it was either basketball or entertainment, and you didn't take the uh, basketball route, so you wanted to, to write a book. What, what you got your own? Degree in? Uh, my degree in literature. Okay. Right. So that means you could pen a whole book, poem, and all that other stuff. Yeah, I can do some of that. that. Yeah. I've done Inter that before. Interesting, interesting. Um, you ever, you put out any books yet? No, I haven't put it in there. I'm, I'm, I'm writing something right now. Okay. My life story, basically. Okay, don't give them the title because people will be stealing, man. Right? So <laughs> you, you, you give them a little one word in the title and they try to try to beat yeah. you right. to the title. Um, your, your life story, Um, what, what's the highlight of your life? So far, well, I think that people would say pulling Notorious Big out the car when he died is the highlight of my life. But I think the highlight of my life is raising a, a boy to be a man, mm -hmm. a girl to be a woman, mm -hmm. and have them go on and do and take care of themselves and be positive role models in the community. Got you. Got you. Um, um, if you're talking about the entertainer side, I could tell you a story when I saved Dougie Fresh's life. Wow. Dougie Fresh wouldn't be here today. Wow. You know, things like that. It's a lot of things I could tell you uh, that the people in the entertainment, the people who go to the YouTube, the people who go to the the uh, television could say, yo, that was a highlight of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just think that being, to have a dude's you know, a grown man sit in front of me and cry and tell me he changed his life and he can do different things now. Mm -hmm. He don't have to be in the drug game. He don't have to rob and steal and kill to support his family. Mm -hmm. That's a highlight of my life, brother. You have, um, is there any part you feel like might was a low point in your life? I think that to be accused of doing something that you know, I you know you didn't do, mm -hmm. and they could the system could take your life from you when you know you're right and you're fighting the system. Mm -hmm. uh, people think that you know, I was a, I was a New York State parole officer okay. for 27 years, and at one time I was accused of putting my gun to somebody's head, beating them, and then I had to go through the system as if I was a criminal, and this guy had a criminal record. Wow. You understand? So, so a criminal accused you of being a criminal. Right. Wow. 
But see, you got to realize, and I tell people this all the time, and that's why I tell a lot of the brothers who are law enforcement, they rather have one of us than to have 10 criminals. Mm. You get it? Mm -hmm. So I think that was probably one of the lowest points in my life. How long did you fight that situation? I fought it for about two years. Mm. Was you exonerated? I was exonerated, completely okay. exonerated. So when you get exonerated and you get accused, what's the retribution? Like you just say, okay, I'm good? No, you can sue the person. Okay. You can sue the individual. Uh, what happens is, is they the state will take you through that, but then they was like, it ain't our fault, but they didn't use every mechanism to fight you. Mm. You understand? They can exhaust all your income. Yes, fight. Yeah. Fighting them. They have, I, I looked over there and they had like four or five lawyers trying to get me. Mm. And I've given this guy all my money and some, you know, selling your jewelry, doing all the things. So every time he like gets that. adjourned, you yeah. got to pay him again. Well, no, he had a he had an upfront fee and okay. then he get a fee at the end. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Gotcha. So he had an upfront fee, but you got to realize is that I had one of those attorneys. He said, yo, listen here. We gonna have to do. I found out a lot of things that I didn't know mm -hmm. because I had a great attorney. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like the cops were saying that there was nobody that could witness the crime being done, but the guy in the tow truck driver. My lawyer spent eight hundred dollars for one picture. Mm. At the time, they said the incident happened because they had to give it up at discovery. Mm. He got a he got a satellite photo from NASA. Wow. Of the parking lot where the incident happened at. Mm. You get it? Yeah. And it showed a lot of other people right there on the lot and they didn't question nobody. So meaning if you <laughs> didn't have the money and the resources, you might not be here telling this situation the way you're telling it. Yeah, exactly. So it's a money game. It's a money game. And good lawyer. Listen here, bro. Why if you're going to say you want the truth, the symbol that represents the truth has a blindfold on it. You're talking about the scale, right? Oh, mm. justice. Crazy. She wears a blindfold. <laughs> Deep. Nah, you, you, yeah, you dropped that. that All right. that's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, crazy. So, um... The, the the guy who accused you still walking around or like I guess oh, okay I, 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 I mean you I, never I, had another um no I had no okay, other okay. Other, no not at all I'm not talking about you never saw him saw the person again uh no I haven't seen him. okay okay no. yeah well if you you a sucker if you, you know he just, he just <laughs> I'm saying that you know yeah. but um because I don't know how you accuse somebody of doing something and know you lying like what what was he looking to get out of it he was looking to sue you well you got to realize it was an incident he had crashed my car it was a tow truck and you can see it is it's it's, it's it's it was made the news and everything like that so damn you always on the news What's yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, word, knock right? on wood yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the old you say yeah. so it is what it is man um so how did you get into uh being a, a body would you consider yourself a bodyguard what's the proper term for that well i wouldn't say i was a bodyguard you got to realize is that um I was just a regular dude in a crew. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was a part of the same gang. Okay. Same gang was a crew that was started by Aesop Ferg, father, mm. myself, Mike Owens, uh, Tabadoo, Tab, um, Tone Wop. You ever heard the dance called Do the Tone Wop? The Tone yeah, Tone yeah, Wop? Yeah, 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 the yeah. dude named Tone Wop. And a dude named Rick, Rick Dog. All these guys are from Harlem. Mm. You understand? I was a dude who me and D. Ferg met at St. John's Cathedral. He was doing T-shirts then. I was a counselor. Got you. You know, one of my first jobs. And, um, you know, I was a fraternity guy, too, also. Okay. So, you know, he wanted to start a clique. You're a Q, right? Uh, oh, that's the only thing I could I'm about think. to say, because, <laughs> but, yo, let me ask you something. Sidebar, yeah. why are all Qs big as hell? What is that all about? I've never seen a, a skinny Q. Yeah, I've seen ever. a few of them. Them the ones you don't want to run into. Oh, right, yeah. oh the skinny Q, though? Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. I and see if you're online, they're, them to be the ones that are... Uh, let me stop right there. Okay, yeah. Put it on you. Because yeah, every cute dog I ever seen was Diesel. Yeah, big. I, yeah. I'm like, what is that all about? So you got the brand, too? I got several. Damn. Yeah. All right. So you you met at the um, cathedral? And we met at the cathedral, so he wanted to start. Uh, he had seen this thing uh, 
it was just thing, self destruction. Got you. Right. And then all the clicks was coming up. Some of the clicks was coming up. It was butt naked. Um, it was uh, things called. Uh, it was I'm losing my losing my train of thought. It was butt naked. It was. Uh, um, who else? Couple of crews. NFLs, yeah, okay. NFL. They wasn't before us, but you know everybody started getting their own crew from the okay. block because what happened was the hustling dudes start uh, taking their money. And throwing parties. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if you throw a party, you could flip your money. Got you. And then if you put it in the LLC, you could say it's legal because I got this money from this party. Got you. You know, so they learned that game. So we started giving bus rides, parties, and all that stuff like that. Some of the guys in the same game had legal jobs. They were COs. They were they were entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Some of them hustled, did whatever like that. Mm-hmm. And um, we all just would come together, do parties and things like that. Got you. Right. So so y'all start uh, a crew together. Right. So how did you end up holding rappers and entertainers down? Well, um, the same gang was giving parties and stuff like that, and Butt Neck was giving parties, and dudes was having problems at their parties. Mm. But I was the one that I could put um, a good team together. Mm. See, um, security is about you know how good your team is. Yes. So what I did was I w- I got four COs, one sergeant, four dudes from the street. Mm-hmm. I would have ten guys. Mm. You know, like like the four dudes on the streets were serious. Mm-hmm. You understand? Know they did it basically because it was just fun and the girls. Mm-hmm. They didn't need the money. They had money. They you know they were doing their thing. Mm-hmm. But to see them at the parties and see them, they would have some kind of authority and stuff like that. That's what they wanted. Mm-hmm. You understand the CEOs and you know the CEOs and other people like that. They were, they were just as serious, you know, doing their thing and stuff like that, making a couple mm-hmm. extra hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Tax, you know, tax free yeah, yeah, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I would put a good team together. Then this dude Tim Dog, who was over the Lost Boys. That's the producer. Producer. Butt naked Tim though. Yeah, Tim that Buck was Naked. That's yeah. so butt naked was him? Yeah. Well, I admit. People don't even know no, that. No, but because when you said butt naked, I was gonna say the only person I ever heard with that name was Tim Dog. But he's the one who did dreams for Biggie. Yeah. He produced that beat. Yeah. 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 Butt naked Tim Dog. And then yeah. you know he was the president over at Epic and stuff yes, like that. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yes. so so Tim Dog, he had the Lost Boys and stuff like mm-hmm. that. He was like, Yo, Gene, I need your security team, man. Mm. So I started doing the security team, you know, started doing the butt naked parties. Wow. Because they was having problems at the front door. So I would have Two dogs. I had the dogs. The everything like that. Mm. Boom. So, uh, I think the the biggest party I did was Heavy D's birthday party at the mm. California Club. Whew. Yeah. How many people? It was packed. Damn. Yeah. Rest in peace, Heavy D. Yes, great brother. Great. Nobody. Brother. Uh, and I want to ask you that. I did a, a a podcast on why is Heavy D not celebrated in your opinion? Cause. Anybody that has, in our culture, it seems like if you go to college, mm-hmm. you understand, you come home with your degree. Uh, can I say it? Yeah. That dude just a college boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 that yeah. nigga just a college boy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're a good dude. He you know what I'm saying? He ain't nothing like that. Let somebody come home from jail and they got a rip on their chin or, or, or something like that. Yeah, my man was holding it down. Yeah, yeah, he for yeah. Yo, he a good dude, man. Come on, bro. Yeah. That, that's the poison they put in our minds. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yo, let me hit him off, man. Let me hold let them hold some and everything like that. Take him to get some sneakers. Yeah, let me take him to get him a care sneakers. package. Yeah, get like him sneakers. You know what I'm saying? Them but you want to have him get this guy get a tie so he can go to his job interview. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know. It's how we celebrate and what we think is important. We celebrate as a failure. Piece, like that. Yeah. We celebrate failure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because I, I always like, you know, um, Heavy D put a, he helped a lot of people. Heavy helped a lot. And he stopped a lot of things from happening to people. Mm. You understand? Mm. And he held Mount Vernon down. Yeah. Like he loved Mount Vernon. Put it Vernon. on the map. He loved Mount yeah, Vernon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the dudes and the people around there. Mm. Right? Crazy, but you know, heavy should be celebrated because it's a couple of people in the industry that wouldn't be in the industry if it wasn't for heavy. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. So, um, you had you did the big heavy D party with right. the, with the Tim Dog joint your first gig. No, uh-uh. okay. I, I was doing the Cotton Club. I was doing same gang parties. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because the same gang because this cat, uh, Puffy was trying to 
you know, he was looking for an image. He was looking for a crew to be with. He became one of the same, one of the first same gang initiation, initiates, okay. you know, the person that yeah, you yeah. initiate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, he was being, he was like and part of that whole crew that summer. Got you. That got initiated. Got you. So is that how you end up holding him down on the individual tip? Yeah. Okay. So because he was doing the building back in the day, if you remember, he was doing the building in the red yeah. zone. You, this was way before he was with the the building in the red zone. The building was where he did the Monday night night unsigned hype. Mm. You understand? He was doing Monday night unsigned hype at the building. He was doing Wednesday at the red zone. That's a little little before my time. I, I probably <laughs> couldn't come outside at that time. So you wasn't yeah. there for City College, right? I was the one who opened the door for those kids that saved their lives. The nine kids that died that night. Wow. Because City College, a lot of people don't know about City yeah, College. The general don't. public don't know about City yeah. College. Nine kids died that night. And that was Puffy's party. That was Puffy's party. Um, And the money was missing too, right? Oh, they had the money. They, 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 they could play that role if they want to because uh, Jessica Rosenberg, she took the money, ran down the steps, and shut the door. And that's how those kids got tra- trapped. She ended up being the tunnel. She ended up doing a yeah, lot too. A lot Managing of flex. Like yep. Yep. Yeah, wow. So she had those nine kids on her, on her life, and she never got charged or implicated in any of that. I heard Puffy paid them off. Did he ever pay them off? I can't. I can't. I can't really say that because I don't know. Yeah, the financial I, I think situation he. Yeah, I think that. he did. Uh, they made some settlements. And yeah, he settled like that, with them, but you know, with the city college. I remember being. They young. took the lump. Yeah, so, and they got um, trampled. It was a, a trample, right. and the door didn't go outward. Right, it came inward. The door you had to. You had to pull the door inward. In, inward. Yeah. It didn't go outward. So when everybody ran, they couldn't push the door out because the door came in. Yeah. And it was a stampede. And yeah, nine you had to kids. open it from the inside. Got you. It was a right. stampede and nine kids right. died. Yo, man, listen to me, man. And this is a tragic situation. It was the girl. She was pregnant by Father MC. God bless the dead. Mm. She, we got her out the crowd. Mm-hmm. She first, they was trapped in the glass doors that was upstairs. Mm. You know, they ran from being trapped in the glass doors upstairs to go downstairs and be trapped at the doors that they couldn't even open. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we got her out the glass door. And don't you know, my man held her to the side and said, Ma, go home, you're pregnant. Mm. When I opened the door, she was one of the first people that fell through the doors. Mm. But nine people, so you seen the people deceased already? Right there, on wow. the floor. Wow. Eight of them. I think one died at the hospital. Wow. You seen death a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. So you um, you did the city. So when did you start it bodyguarding for him? When he when Bad Boy started or prior to? Well, that? I heavy came to the block. <laughs> you know, <laughs> save some, you know, say put that cape on heavy. He came uh-huh. to the block because some things was about to happen. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And he and he, he talked people down and told me because, like, if I tell you to do something mm-hmm. and not to do something, and you paying me to not only to, for your safety, for everybody else's safety here, mm-hmm. and something happens because of what you did, mm-hmm. then I think you should be responsible for that. Got you. You know? You know, everything else get to, you should be responsible for that. Mm-hmm. So Heavy came to the block, talked, you know, you know, he talked to one of the bosses, talked to me and everything like that. And everything got rectified. So you are in Harlem at this time? Harlem, yeah, okay. 112th okay. Street and 8th Avenue. Okay. We had a fish store and we had a game room right there. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Is that where T-Rex is from too? T-Rex is from off the block. I know yeah. T-Rex. Yeah. He, I was the first one who took T-Rex and used to battle, have him battle people. Wow. He was 12 years old. Wow. Take him to the Bronx, take him to Queens. So you was there for the Uncasa battle too? He battled Uncasa. It was outside. This was like one of his first. No, nah, his first battle was Money Money Mike at Lambert Houses Damn. <laughs> in the Bronx. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 12? You 12 years old. Wow. He won me $300. <laughs> yeah. I used you know to side bet on the battle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. then, and then he went out to Queens. Mm and told everybody up at Black Hands. Mm, Chaz. Chaz. You know what I'm saying? He battled Grab too? too. Uh, I think he Grab I think he battled Grab. Grab couldn't Grab couldn't touch him back then. Well, you know, you know that you know they're gonna be like, 
Yeah. Gene, you crazy? Greg, Greg is Greg, nice. Greg couldn't touch T-Rex back then at 12 years old. Chaz said, yo, Gene, he 12. You just can't believe him. Wow. <laughs> Oh, because he's when he's talking the street stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah. talking that street stuff. He's 12 years Rest in peace, Chaz, because you know the OGs is just like. Well, check this out. Uh-huh. It's one big battle he had on the phone. Mm. And I found out this kid um, is big on um, Nick Nick uh, Cannon stuff. Oh, Charlie uh, Clips? Not Charlie Clips. Uh, uh, Conceited? Uh, no, no, no. The dude from St. Louis. Oh, um, um, Hitman uh, Holla. Hitman Holla. Oh, wow. I had him battle Hitman Holla on the phone. Because you're from the Lou, right? From the Lou, wow. yeah. I had him battle Hitman Holla from the from Lou when they both was about 10, 11, 12 years old. Wow. On the phone. Wow. That's that's crazy. Way back then. So you knew Hitman Holla when he was little? I knew his father. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Big Joe. Yeah, Big Joe. Big Joe, yeah, because you know him and Aver battle, yeah, and they're from the loop. Yeah, his father's name is Big Joe. Yeah, yeah, wow. He, he's real close with my little brother. Wow, Joe's close with my little brother. We we was at his house actually when it happened. Wow, yeah, crazy, crazy. So you had T Rex in Harlem, and you had Hitman. Harlem. You got battle rap history right there. Yeah. Um. So go ahead. If you want to talk about battle rap history, the person who started that battle rap history, he don't get he. Oh God, he doesn't get any. Recognition. Recognition at all for it. Who's that? Unique. Who's that? Unique was the guy who started Mecca Audio. So it's, it's coming to me a little Mecca bit. Audio had, they used to do a club right there on Club 2000 on Broadway. Oh, 157th yeah, 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 yeah. and Broadway. I took the train up there one day from yeah. Brooklyn. That's a long ride. Yeah. Club but it was worth it, right? Yeah, no, nah, it was worth it. Club 2000 was nice. It was worth it. I think Biz got cut there one time, right? Yeah, he got Biz got cut. Yeah. Cause um I used to go. Everybody up thought he was trying to rob Biz. They wasn't trying to rob Biz. Yeah, yeah. I remember Biz had stole some stuff from Mecca Audio and gave it to Naughty by Nature. Oh well, that's the end of that. <laughs> that is, yeah. um, you know what? Cause Club Two Thousand. That's when um Do It All from Lords of the Underground used to uh call my crib and say, uh-huh. "Come to the club." I'm like, "We had Club Two Thousand. That was a long A train ride." Yeah. That was a long train. So you um when did when did you and and so how many people were you bodyguarding for? I don't I don't it's you gotta be like family. Got you. You understand? Because that's what happens is that if you see some if you see me with somebody, mm-hmm. I'm ready to lay down my life for them. Mm. I don't have no problem with laying down my so life. So it's not a money thing, it's not, it's not work a money for thing. hire. Yeah. No, no, Got it's you. not that. You understand, when I was with Puff, people would tell you, could nobody get at him? No, he never had a problem situation individual with an individual because I I stopped the way before it got to him. Mm. So you wasn't there when the um, Shine incident happened in the club? No, we was off. We Yo, listen, that incident with Shine, bro, uh-huh. we was off. Puff was in the Hamptons. Mm. I don't know if y'all know this. He was in the Hamptons with Jennifer Lopez. They was catching the... Boat finna go on this some kind of uh, Mediterranean excursion and stuff uh-huh. like that on their own yacht. He called Wolf and Wolf said he and the uh, uh, I'm in the I'm at the show I'm down here on 44 40 something like that mm-hmm. I'm at the, the club. He said yeah. He said oh I'm on my way. He said no stay home. Mm-hmm. So then they called me and say yo Gene. I said what? What you doing? I said I'm off. Wow. <laughs> Hung up the phone. Mm. You understand? And that's when that stuff happened. So y'all, so he was, because he wasn't even supposed to be there. He wasn't even supposed to be there. We was off. Wow. So Wolf was officially his bodyguard too? Wolf, see, it's, what happened was, Wolf had, Wolf. Was rest in peace of, Wolf too, let's say Wolf, that. Yeah, rest in peace Wolf. Wolf was part of Butt Naked. Got you. Butt Naked was the financiers of Bad Boy Records. Was it, do that again. Say that again. Wolf was a part of Butt Naked. Crew. Crew. Okay. Butt Naked was the financiers of Bad Boy Records before they even got to Clyde Davis. Mm. So they were they the ones responsible for that whole Big Mac thing and all that? That money and that wow. whole thing like that, whole stuff like that was all a part of the Butt, the butt Naked stuff. Wow. They money. Wow. And you know they had got 916 of life sentences. <sighs> Heavy, yeah, yeah. So it goes so, a lot. Yeah, so Wolf um, was he had his own contract. He was getting his own. He was getting his check, and he had to work. 
Got you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he was on the payroll forever. He was on the payroll forever. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So that's why after a while so he, he could just be in videos and just Do whatever he wanted to do. Got you, got you. He was getting a stipend every two weeks like a, yeah. yeah. No, we was getting paid every week. Oh, sh- hey, that's that's even better. Yeah. So um, so when did you start? Was you still? um? I stopped dealing with Puff after the City College thing. Okay. Yo, but I was still dealing with butt naked doing got that party. Got you, got you. Because that last party they had the lows when they had the shoot thing, the shootout and everything like that. Long story. Uh, I was still dealing and working with Tim Dog doing got his you. parties and got things you. like that. So, Wolf had an incident with somebody that was close to me. Got you. We straightened that out, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And when they came back from Atlanta, Wolf asked me, did I want to come work for Bad Boy? I said, I ain't, I ain't messing with dude. Got you. Because you know of the saying? city college thing? Or you because just of the city college style. thing okay. like that. And, and, I, and I saw that he was, he said, yo, Gene, you ain't got to listen to nobody but me. Mm. All right? You ain't got to listen to nobody but me. You know got what I'm saying? And I said, all right, then, Wolf, you know what I'm saying? Because Wolf taught me how to get money at the door. Got you. You understand? Oh, you was one of them. Oh, you want to wear that hat? Give me a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yo, damn. I, I couldn't stand y'all. Yo, like, Wolf. You, no, we. Yo, we used to kill them. Yo, because like, I remember it was a going dress up party. Yeah, I remember going to like like places like um lobby and places cheaters. He'd be like, Yo, I don't like your shirt. Give me a hundred dollars. You could wear. It. Like, yo, what you mean? Or like, like, he would just they would just pick you off the line. It'd be like a whole line of people. I don't like your shirt. Or go to the car and change your shirt. Like, yo, what you talking about? I came here dressed like this. So, yeah, y'all was making a lot of extra money. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me, he said, yo, Gene, you got to dress when you come at the door, man. You know, you can't be like the regular security dudes. You understand? Wear your jewelry, wear your wear your stuff, and then dudes will give you a lot of money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Cause, so it went from, like, $20 to jump in line to $100. Yeah, facts. To $200 and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I, I could tell you God honest truth. I mean, like, one time at the party, I made, like, 7000 at the door. Ooh. Because people didn't want to wait in line. That was more than your your fee you was getting for the day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if if I was working for Puff, you know, I, I I'm I'm on the payroll. So you work for Puff through Wolf? No, I had my own contract. Okay, so but Wolf just got brought me back and back brought us into, back into Graces. Got you, yeah. You because I wanted to clarify that for the yeah. people. So you did end up working for Puff again after City College, but P- Wolf is the one that mended that fence. Yeah, Wolf mended okay. that fence. Okay, Wolf mended that fence. Right. Um, when he when 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 the Atlanta when the Atlanta incident happened, where were you at? I was in New York. Not not with Wolf. The uh the so called Suge Knight incident at the Jermaine Dupri party. Yeah, I, I was in you New was York. In New York. Yeah. You heard about that too, right? I heard about that. Was that the start of the friction? Um, that was the start of the friction, but it wasn't. It was. It was stuff that people made up because Wolf and Sugar was right next to each other. Mm, wow. When uh, Jake got killed. Wow. So how they gonna say Wolf did it? Mm. And uh, was he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Superpowers or something like that. He was right next to him when the shots went off. Wow. Because they was cool. Wow. Puffy and, and Suge was cool too at the time. Puffy and Suge was cool. Wow. So where did where did that tension come from? Was it Suge bullying him, or Puffy really was doing stuff behind the scenes that we didn't know? Well, I, I heard a couple of stories that Puff wanted some money from Suge when Suge asked him to do a party for them, mm-hmm. and he, Puff wanted the door or whatever like that. I heard that story, but what I actually think it was is that you know Puff uh, Suge was just trying to use the fact that. Um. Bad boy is is getting a they lot of come up. They come you know, up. they got them to come up. They got a lot of play. They getting all this stuff like that. We got to show that we have that power. Got you. You know what I'm saying? And any any record executive at that time, they didn't see with us. The people only the, the, those folks only want to see one at the top. Yes. They don't want to see four or five yeah, at the top be, and all like that. Can't it be, can't be Cardi, Nicki, and Little Kim. It got to be yeah, one. It's got to be one. It can't be no Jay Z, Nas. It got to be one. It's got to yeah. be one. Yeah, that's why they always say that's who's the best. That's corporate America. You know what I'm saying? Right, but it but can't they don't be never Coke say, and Pepsi. Yeah, but they don't never say who's the best rock group. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You understand? You're absolutely right. Who's the best crooner? Yeah, you yeah, understand? Yeah. That's a singer for those who don't know. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, you was there for the well, um, come to death row speech at the Source Awards? Nah, nah. Oh. Listen, I was not dealing with dude no more. None of that. When did you come back in the fall? What year? I came back right after that Jake sh- that the shooting. Got you. Okay, so you came right. back then because Wolf said, "Yeah." So the situation happened, man. God bless the dead. And 
um, I'm not even going to tell the story, but Wolf said, told him, said, yo, if Gene run after me and I got a gun in my hand, I want him on our team. Mm. So we met on 125, 125th Street across from the, uh, across from Mark 20, 125, 25 mm-hmm. at the time. And me, him, Rico, and Slick, we ironed some things out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was it. So you, so then you started just going on the road with them yep. everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then you had your own contract. With Puff. So, so what is a contract? How do, how do y'all do that? You, he just says, "Yo, I want you to hold me down for this, and I'm gonna pay you." How no, does he contract- pay you for like you know, Puff was the principal. Okay. Puff has always been my principal. Nobody okay. else. Gotcha. I was responsible for nobody else. Puff and his kids. Mm. He he give you you know roundabout figures. I, we talked about it off the air. Got you. That's what we get. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then is uh, that a, after the first ten hours you get that much. You could make. I had I had them for two or three days out the week, and I was pulling anywhere from eighteen to twenty four. Mm, for three days of work. Yeah. Wow. And most of it be in the studios, or he going out to dinner, or he playing with the kids. Just you and him. Me and him. So yeah, because you 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 felt like how would you you would have felt awkward having other bodyguards with you with him or no it was other bodyguards okay, a certain time okay. depending on where we were going got you if we got was going you. into certain clubs or we was going to certain spots it was it wasn't only me got you right so when this but I'm, ho- I'm, I'm the one that's responsible for him so uh w- when this whole east coast west coast thing start heating up did it get more intricate your job i've always looked at it and viewed it as the same got you you know what I'm saying like uh I go on the principle, you know, failure to prepare is preparing to fail and nothing beats an ambush. Mm. So I'm always on point. Got you. Looking for something to happen. Got you. And, um, you know, you, you told the world some stories that it's crazy because according to what you're saying, it means a lot of people are in cahoots with hiding the truth. Oh, no doubt. And, 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 and you know what the problem is? Mm-hmm. Is that not saying you, mm-hmm. but people who have the opportunity to ask people certain questions don't. when they get to a form like this, they don't. Because mm. because I'm a, I'm gonna be real with you. You know, uh, me and you spoke off record, and um, mm-hmm. I had I apologize to you okay. because I was one of the people that was like, "Yo, he gotta be lying because this is like." So big, how come nobody's corroborating your story? Why do you think that is? Nobody corroborated the story with you. Because the f- the fact of the matter is, is that you always chase the money. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Listen here, I kept my job. I Got fought you. for my job. Got you. I'm retired and I get a pension every month. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I could sit in the corner, not even come home, and I just pimp the mailman. <laughs> yeah right. Watch the you know mailbox right. Yeah yeah. You know what I'm yeah, yeah. So yeah. so you know, I don't have that responsibility. When big, when that stuff happened to big, mm-hmm. the FBI and everybody questioned somebody said if anybody from Bad Boy speak to any law enforcement people, they'll never work for Bad Boy. They'll never do this. They'll never have nothing to do with them. So you know what I'm saying. So they didn't want y'all to but tell the truth. They didn't want them. They didn't want them to say nothing. Who orders the who, who ordered that puff? It came from puff, the top. It okay. came from the top. Yeah. Wow. So now you you could say this. Uh huh. I've seen those C's. Mm-hmm. I've seen D Rock mm-hmm. on platforms. Mm-hmm. Nobody never asked him. So hey, this guy Gene Deal saying uh, he told y'all that night before y'all left Andre Harrell's house that these guys were coming to kill us tonight. Mm. Did he say it? Let them say, yo, he lying. You know who gonna pull that out of them? Huh? I'm gonna ask. I got I have to. It's just my job. I have to ask one of them. Cause I think the world needs to know what happened. Did you ever have a conversation with Ms. Wallace? I had a conversation, uh a, a tear dropping conversation with Ms. Wallace. Mm. And 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 without, you know, indulging in the conversation, how did how did you tell her what you told the world? Did you? I told her. Mm. I told her to the point where she grabbed my hand, and she was in tears. Mm. And she said, "I don't want to hear that no more." Wow. Did you ever hear Big Ron where he says, "Mom, mom's crouched up over the casket, screaming basket. No, my friends is lying. Y'all know who killed them, filled them. Did you ever hear that verse? 
I never even looked at right there. He said that. Yo, my man, you freaking me out right now. I'm de- crazy. I'm de- I just got the chill saying it, but I'm dead serious. He says that. And pray, right? That's pray, right? No my friends is lying. Mom's crouched up sc- over the casket, screaming bastard. No my friends is lying. Y'all know who killed them, filled them with them rugas. Yeah, that's a biggie verse off his off life after death. That's crazy. Yeah. Yo, let me just tell you something, man. The day I spent with Big, mm-hmm. and I talked about this, and I told Miss Wallace, and she knew I was there because I told her everything they was talking about. Wow. You understand? Oh, what he was talking on the phone. On the phone. Okay. Ma, I'm going to send you the 60000 Tell a contractor, don't worry about it. Just give just give me, I'm, don't worry about it. And she, was, and you could hear, you know, you, you could see like, yo, well, they talking about they're not going to finish building the house because they was doing a house out there in Pennsylvania, you mm-hmm, know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. He said, don't worry about it, Ma. I'm gonna give her the money. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send you the money. Just tell the contract. Give me the information. I'm gonna make sure somebody take care of it. Big was showing me his contract and everything like that, and I didn't know why Big was just talking to me like he was talking to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's because Lucy's just came out and said, "Yo, Big wasn't talking to me all week because I left those pictures in the room in Charlie Baltimore, seen them in the bag. Mm. I remember the incident because I was right there of him and another chick." Him and some other chicks, from gotcha, his, gotcha. chicks around San Francisco. Gotcha. You know, Charlie seen the uh, uh, pictures and got into, and they got into a big fight. She threw his Rolex mm-hmm. and his ring out the window. Whoa. You understand? Yeah. We got the Rolex back, but we didn't mm-hmm. find the ring. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, um, long story short, um, I'm telling Miss Wallace everything and like stuff like this. So when Big gets off the phone, I said, "Damn, man." You owe everybody. Because <laughs> mm. I'm, you know, I'm messing with him. Yeah, yeah, Because, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm a little older. I'm teasing him, messing mm-hmm, with him and mm-hmm. stuff like that. He said, I don't, he said, I owe everybody. I said, yeah, you owe Mike, Ga- Mike Gadget 60000 for them cars. Because Mike Gadget had put those drop boxes in all his cars and stuff Got like you. that. And he was bragging about it. He was saying stuff. Yo, you ain't big, I get my money. He was like, yo, how you know that? Wow. You know, he wanted, I said, uh-huh. I said big, let's talk. So dudes is talking his business. Yeah, he was talking. He said, dude, mm. dudes is talk. So Big told me all his business from that time D Rock and them was gone. D Rock had left and went with Puff. Mm. So Big told me all he told me about Junior Mafia, mm-hmm. his relationship. Yo, he was just spilling out everything to me. And I was like, and you know, I had some uh, Newport cigarettes because I was mm-hmm. smoking cigarettes at the time. Mm-hmm. And he had the soft packs mm-hmm. and I had the box and he wanted to get like, so we just, yeah. and I was like, yo, this kid told me his lo- his business and everything. I, he had all these groups. He's about to leave Bad Boy. Uh, I would take you with me. That's what he told me. But you love that n- too much. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, he, he, uh-huh. he joking back and forth and stuff like that. I said, no, I'm going to go with you, big. You know what you paying, man? He was talking about. It was, it was just situations like that. So he was telling me his whole life story, man. I was like, damn. So this the ironic thing. The night Big got killed, mm-hmm. you know, he's sitting in the chair. I'm behind him. If you see that picture with that dude with that four, mm-hmm. that's me, a slimmer version of got me. Got you, got you. You understand? And I kept that joint on my back like got that. Got you, got you. So then uh, Puff kept... Leaving, going back and forth, going back and forth. So he said, yo, Gene, stay there with Big. So I stayed there with Big for the rest of the night right there. This is the first time you ever had Big as as uh, the principal? Well, I had him that, that time in the Winnebago. Got you, got you. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time I ever had him upstairs at the at the thing. Got you. Because you know, so before that, Puff was always just you and Puff. Just you never had Puff. Big as a client. I never had a Big okay. as a client. Okay, okay. So Puff, or, or, or when he on stage, Puff said, yo, Gene, Go out when you you know go yeah, out yeah, there on the yeah, stage because yeah, yeah. he know that I'm not gonna let nobody come up on the stage like that. Got you. You know I was, I was kind of brainwashed to the city, man. You Got know you. what I'm saying? Because I had this premonition that I had to save Puff and be there for Puff for other people's dreams to come true. Mm. That was I, that's what I was there for. Mm. So I was willing to lay down my life for dude at that time. Was he the that night? Was he the intended target, you believe, or was it always big? I can't even say that, man. I, don't, okay. I, I, I can't even say it. But what I can say is that he acted in a manner that he never acted before for somebody who had been with him that long, mm. and that's me. Mm. That's just like these dudes, I don't know y'all relationship yeah, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, we've been together for some years. Yeah, if y'all been together somewhere, and they see you, and 
you're doing something totally out the way, they're going to look at each other and be like, What's good with him? Yeah. Yo, man, come on. You know, doggy don't be acting like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's wrong with him? Somebody put something in his cup? What's wrong with doggy? You know, this night, that was Diddy. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Bringing girls back. Yo, Gene, remember. Gene, remember. He know I don't like to be bothered when when uh, I'm doing you know security, mm-hmm. especially with no chicks, no dudes, or no nothing. Mm-hmm. I got to make sure you all right. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking here, there, and stuff like, yo, Gene, bring a girl directly to me. Gene, get her name and everything. Remember her. No. Yeah. So then Big said, how the hell Gene going to remember all these girls? Because mm. he had brought like five or six, about six or seven girls tell, telling me to remember them. Mm-hmm. Get their name and everything, get to remember. Mm-hmm. And we at, a death row party <laughs> in death row, land, yeah. death row land. Yeah, because <laughs> all the death row guys who was in there, it's like I'm like. Mm. So now, I take a pen and I take a napkin off the table mm-hmm. and I put, I'll remember on it. Mm. So when he brought the last girl over to me, he brought another girl over to me. Yo, Gene. You remember her something like that, like that? And Big turned around and looked at me like this. You know, one eye went this way, the other eye <laughs> yeah. went that way. Yeah. He looked at me, and I put the paper up like this. I'll remember. Mm. It's like, that's why I'm here today. Wow. Because I remember what he told me. I remember what he was going through, and I remember what happened. Mm. When I first met you was in front of Jersey Girls. Correct. First time I met you. What you told me that night, I'll never forget what you told me. You told me what happened to Big. And I was like, that's not what they said happened. Could you, for the, for the people, you, I'm pretty sure you told them, the last moments of what happened, the shooting, how did it happen again? Well, me and Puff was arguing outside the car because I wanted to ride on top of the uh like, you know. The presidential riding. The president. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm it's crazy, man. Like, things happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, two weeks before we went out to L.A., I did this uh, interrogation and surveillance class with the DEA because mm. my job was offering and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they told you how to question somebody. You, you 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 do a line of questioning, and if they do what they call an involuntary eye movement, involuntary motion, mm-hmm. I, you ask them like uh, a series of 10 questions that you know the individual is going to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. Then you ask them something that's uncomfortable for them. You understand? Almost like a verbal lie detector? Right. Gotcha. And then you ask them something that if... You know they're gonna tell an outright lie mm. about it, or be untruthful, and then you look at their motions doing that every time, and you, so you you jotting down the different motions he's doing doing those questioning. Then we did what they called uh, uh, surveillance, mm-hmm. like it was two people, it was people in the classes, and they tell you these people what they had on. You had they're gonna try to you you gotta follow them they're gonna try to lose you. Mm-hmm. So in the interim of that class, they was telling him about being in the car and knowing if somebody follow follow you. Mm. He said if you make three rights or run three lights, and somebody's behind you doing the same thing, they following you. Mm. You are you run through you take three rights you in the same place you start. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. So if that car is behind you, yeah, we're going you, back to the same place for. Yeah, yeah, why, yeah. We're going back to the same place for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you run three lights and you see somebody running three lights with you or running lights with you, yeah, Evelyn, what's your car? So that night I wanted to do the presidential thing. Mm. Yo, Keefy Dinum had came up into the party. Mm-hmm. I said, Yo, Keefy, yo, big. Big, you know Keefy? Just like that. Yeah, you know, you're big, you know, they gave each other that. So Keefy like D that. is Southside Crips? Yeah. Okay. So he up in there. So right there. So now, the fire alarm. Not went, to cut you, was Baby Lane there or was he No, nah, he wasn't there. Okay. Yeah. So the fire alarm, this is out the pocket's dead. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So that's why when they they, they draw up this whole thing and say, and they, they do this whole radio thing, uh, this whole 
or they found the killer and everything like that. Yo, and Keefe D didn't ever have a conversation with Puff prior to this. Me and Keefe D, and we was in the fourth season gambling together. Mm. You understand? So it's a surveillance video of that somewhere. Huh? It's a surveillance video of that oh, somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. So you're in the fourth season hotel. So we we in the fourth season gambling. Wow. Me, uh, D-Mac, Keefe D, Zip, Puff, and Tretch with Arnell Simpson on his arm. Tretch was down with Tupac, too, though. Well, bro, he was down with yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. But he yeah. a good brother. No, facts, facts. You understand? So he gambling. And well, OJ daughter on his own. That's what he talking about, OJ yeah, Simpson's yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah. And hit them for like 20000 mm. You understand? So it's the Southside Crips. Yeah. Yourself, Puffy, Biggie. D-Mac. Who's D-Mac? D-Mac is a dude from Southside. He's a, okay. he a Crip from out there, too. Okay. He's the one that, you know, always, you know, like, like he's... He worked for Sean John, but him and Puff was real close. Got you. So that was the was that the introduction to the Southside Crips? Because I didn't understand. I don't know. The no, I think the, in, the introduction came from Zip. Okay. And D Mac had his crew that was Crips. You know, I don't know what they Grape Street or whatever they was, or I don't know. And then, or they could have been South some South. I don't know his 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 affiliation with them. Let me ask you something, um, direct. I see different uh, conspiracies. I see different people say different things, right? You know who WAC 100 is, right? I know WAC. WAC said it was a bag. It was somebody from L.A. that did it to Big, but it was a Harlem dude's bag that paid for it. Do you know what he's talking about? Do you know what he's saying? I ain't speaking on it. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Got you. I'm going to say that. Uh... For the last, <laughs> for Gene Deal. <laughs> yeah, for Gene Deal. I'm going to say that for Gene Deal. Because I know, I, I and to be honest with to God, I saw the check. But I don't know where the check came from. I just know the person who had the check, and I know what they told us what he got the check for. All right. And that's how I'm going to leave it at that. Just one more thing on that. So you're telling me you saw the check for Biggie's life? I don't know if it was for Biggie's. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm okay, not saying okay. it was for Biggie's Okay, life. yeah, 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 because we got to clarify that, that. That, that. I saw the check for Pox. I, don't, I guess it was for Pox's life. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure. Damn. I just know after Pac died, that check came into somebody's hand. Mm, got you. And they said, this is what I got the check for. And it was just funny that it was soon after Pac died that they got that check for that. Wow. Um, if you could, if you could when the last time you spoke to Puffy? Face to face. Uh, uh, he tried to send me some money at the, at the Kingdom. Okay. And I wouldn't take it. And, and what year was this? I don't know. It was a two kingdom. It was a kingdom basketball tournament. Bad boy had a, a team in there, and he was talking about yo get us to security. And some dude, uh, dude came on and said yo puff sending us to security. I said I don't want that. Sh mm. yo, give it to somebody else over there. Mm. So you know. left him. He was you never. You never got fired, or was you fired? No, it, it was just a um, like he was tired of his mother bothering me. Explain that. He was, tired of his he was tired of his mother bothering me. It's like every time I'm around, she's asking me to do something, and I'm telling her I'm not here for that. Got you. You know what I'm saying? And he said, why are you always bothering Gene? Got you. Back then, you know, I'm a little slimmer. I was uh -huh. 235, 67. Got, Got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm older than them. Got you. And I'm, I'm just a few years you know, you're not going her. where I think you're going huh? with it. You're not huh? going where I think you're going. I wouldn't with. went. I wouldn't go there. I, okay. I I wouldn't go there. But you're talking about is, are you insinuating what I think you're insinuating? I'm not insinuating nothing. But okay. she had you. But okay, she knows. Okay, we we can leave it there. We can leave it there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, Biggie, when you spoke to him, his publishing. Did he ever speak to you about his publishing? Yes, he did. Who had his publishing? Puff had his publishing and 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 his marketing. And that he was in his last contract. See, I read the contracts. Mm -hmm. See, in the end of the contract, they was going to talk about getting his publishing and his marketing the part that Puff owned back. That's what I read in the contract. Got you. And then I asked him, what's publishing, what's marketing? He said, publishing is when I write something for somebody. He get I got the bread. They get the, they, get, they get the bread for writing. Mm -hmm. But if they know, you know, if I write something for somebody and Puff know I wrote it for them, you understand? He gets the bread. Mm. Marketing is when you see my picture on a poster and it's like I'm selling St. Eyes or so I'm selling stuff like that. So he owns his likeness. Yeah. His likeness. Yeah. Wow. 
So everything, wow. So he told you he was leaving Bad Boy. He said that he's starting his own thing because that's why he got he was getting a uh, contract. He showed me a contract. I don't know if it was six or sixty two million, and I think it was from Capital Atlantic Records. And he was showing he showed me the contract it was for five. It was just for uh, Tracy Murray, uh, Cameron, Little Kim, Junior Mafia, Charlie Baltimore, and the Commission. That's him, Jay Z, and Charlie. I guess. Yes. You know what I'm but I'm just telling you. That's so he already he had me. the paperwork. Already. He had. He, he was on the. He was on. He was reading because he's like he, he was trying to brag, talking about yo, yo, look at this, look at this. See, see, you see that right there? I was like, yeah, man, all right, man, yo, they gonna cheat you out of that too. Did he talk about Brooklyn Mint at all? He had Brooklyn Mint at the time, the clothing. Yeah, he had. He had Brooklyn Mint. And remember, he wanted to do a restaurant too. Yeah, I don't, to do, I don't know about. Yeah, that he part. wanted to do a restaurant in the clothing line, but you know who? Well, ended I know up he doing had the clothing that. line, but you know who ended up doing that? Yeah, a restaurant in the clothing line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you also did something called uh, what did you call the 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 betrayal? What, what did you call that title of that video? The biblical betrayal. The biblical Biggie betrayal, Small. Biggie Smalls. Um, is that how accurate is that, Gene? Look at this, bro. If you know anything that everything I said out of my mouth is accurate, because okay. it's the truth. Okay. But what I did was I put in the ironic satire of as if Biggie was Jesus. Got you. You understand? And D-Rock was Judas. Mm. And Puffy was the devil. And Lil C's and Junior Mafia was the disciples. You know I couldn't watch that whole thing. That me up a little bit. Right. I, don't, I, don't, I ain't supposed to curse, but it really, really tripped me out because it's like... What you're saying is so deep because that means everybody that he grew up with and loved turned on him. Well, I don't think they turned on him. You got to understand this. The the devil whispered? The, uh, the, it's, it's one of the gangsters says that that the devil played a trick on us by making everybody it, think it, that, it, he, it didn't that he didn't exist. Got you. You understand? So now if... Puffy gets in D-Rock. Me and D-Rock had a conversation way before. You got to realize, I'm watching Puffy always on the phone trying to get uh, Big at this, these different parties we went to. Mm -hmm. Big them never showed up at nothing. That's a fact. I know how he moved. He never showed up at nothing. So then now, after the Charlie, um, after the incident with him and Charlie Baltimore, Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? After him and the incident with Charlie Baltimore, they at the studio. Mm -hmm. So me and Rock is in the back together with each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, Rock, man, I'm getting a lot of... My man called me Unique. We mm -hmm. just talked about mm -hmm. Unique, mm -hmm. who started that, that battle rap up there, 150-something gotcha. and the all. Mac Audio. Mac Audio. Mm -hmm. Unique caught me from Federal Penitentiary. So that's where all the orders and everything, they know everything before we know. Right, and he's out in California mm. at the Fed Pen, right? They heard it was a green light. So he said it's a green light. He called me from Don Farrell. Don Farrell was a producer, uh, one of the producers of Never Die Alone. Mm. So she gets on the phone with him. She called like that. And he tells me, yo, Big Gene. I said, yo, who this? He says, unique. Vess up. Mm. Phone clicked out. So the feds must have got a win. It was a three-way call. Got you. You understand? So mm -hmm. it clicked off. So I called Dawn back. I said, Dawn, who is that? She said, Unique. We had this whole conversation. Unique from Mac Audio? Yeah, that's Unique from Mac Audio. He said, yo, Gene, they coming to get y'all. Vest up. I called Kirk Burrow. Yo, Kirk, we need more security. Mm. Dudes is coming at us. Kirk gets back at me. Yo, Puff saying he ain't paying for no more security. Guess who was the security out there? You. Me. Just you? Me. I was his security. Then you had a dude it. named Kenny that was the driver and supposed to be the security. Then you had Paul, who was being paid by Arista and because he's on Bad Boy salary, but he been paid by Arista and he gets another cop. We in an East Coast, West Coast war battle, whatever you want to call it, and we got less than five men out there. Yeah, I was sitting ducks, basically. Listen, I wasn't. I'm getting back home. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, um, really deep. Um, and I know this is gonna bother somebody. Did you ever see the Chronicles of Junior Mafia DVD? I don't think so. 
Little C said out of his mouth, he was angry at Puff on the DVD. He said, Big Body wasn't even cold. Puff got out of there. He left Big out there. Before Big Mother got to L.A., Puff was gone. Yeah, that's true. Puff ran out the back of the hospital. I had cleared everybody out the hospital because now people who left us, it was 23 of us who went into that building together, mm. the Peterson Museum. Mm-hmm. It was only 12 of us that left with each other because they was going to Steve Stout. They left, they seen the atmosphere and ran to Steve Stout house. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we was left up in there. So when Lil C said we had to rate for our cars and stuff like that, Big couldn't even make to the thing, but I'm always thinking security. I ran and got the cars and put them by the door. Mm-hmm. So when they came out, we could just mm-hmm. and gone. Mm-hmm. You understand? You and I both know. I can ask you a question right here. You don't know me from a can of paint. You understand? Mm-hmm. But if we driving together, I run the light. What you do? I'm running that too. Thank you. <laughs> Why they ran? Anybody yeah. who knows that if you get a ticket, I'm getting a ticket yeah, too. Yeah, we together. We all getting a ticket. Yeah. But we doing this together. So I say, Paul, have you ready? Yeah, yeah. Ready. Told you I try to get up on the on the thing. Little C's and them is mad and upset because they know when Puff, when we was in, in the hospital, I got everybody out. Puff ran and grabbed me by my arms. Gene, Gene, we got to pray. We got to pray. I pushed his hands down and I say, pray for what? That dead. And people said I was cold for saying that, doing it like that. But I had just pulled this kid out the car when, and this was the time Miss Miss Wallace was crying like a baby. She, I pulled him out the car, and I could see the urine and the smell of feast all on him. Hmm. You understand? And I just told you. Yeah. I just told you that this was going. Now happen. I got to yeah. deal with this. Yeah. Because it kind of happens on your watch. They going to say you were security. Yo, a lot, a lot of people think that. Yeah. A lot of people think that I was. Initially, big security. Because you look at the picture, you see me right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? You know how many broken windows and things and car tires and all the stuff I went through? Wow. You understand? You know how many threats and everything like that? I'm good, though. Yeah. But w- the whole thing about it is is this. They got that kid out of there on the next thing flying. We took him down to San Diego. Now, Chaz Williams got a crew at the hospital. With us. Black hand. Black hand. God Rest bless the, the dead. Yeah. Yes. So he, where's, where's Chaz at? Chaz was in L.A.? Chaz was in L.A. So he came to hold y'all down and he ain't got nothing to do he with nobody. He ain't got nobody. nothing to do. I That's called, just your man. Yo, I called Chaz. Yeah. Yo, yo, this is blood capital. You understand? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yo, I'm, I'm, where y'all at? The Peterson. I'm going to make sure you good. I told the guy at the thing, yo, Chaz coming here with about eight guys. Make sure they get in. Mm. If I knew Chaz was across the street, the time Big got killed, because Chaz was across the street, wow. about to come across the light. When Big got hit at the light, mm. I would have never got in that car. If I could have got some reception, or I, if, I, if I, I had my phone, right now I'm on point, I can't go to the phone, I can't do nothing. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I had my gun out. So the police asked, the FBI said, did you have your gun out? I said, yes, I did, sir. Mm. Why you had your gun out? I'd rather be... <laughs> I'd rather be judged by uh, 12, 12 and carry by, by 6. six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand? So you saw the person. Did you see the individual that shot in the car? Was he walking? Was he I driving? I didn't see the individual who okay. shot in the car. Okay. The dude who Lucy, Lucy said a Muslim guy shot big. Mm. Right. I said, did he have a blue shoot, suit, white shirt, blue bow, bow tie, peanut head? He said, yeah, Gene. And Paul said, yeah, Gene, how you know? I said, he walked up the puff car first. Mm. But see, this is why I want you know my platform ain't big, bro, and it don't get off. It don't. It, it the information don't get out mm-hmm. like it should mm-hmm. to 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 the people. Now, M. Rec, you know he he did it, and and it got to yeah. multitudes and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. and it helped a whole lot. But the LAPD, I had a lawyer there with me. You know, so if they try to lie. 
Mm-hmm. The lawyer will come forward. She was there with me. Mm-hmm. The lawyer witnessed the fact. They showed me a picture with the dude in the blue suit, white shirt, and blue bow tie. Mm-hmm. Diddy and me. But they had messed up the face so I can't see the face in the picture. And they said they was going to redo the picture or fix it and bring it back to me or fly me out there. You understand? Mm-hmm. They never did. They had the picture of the guy. That you identified. That I identify as C's, C's identified. and the C's identify as the shooter. And Paul identified. Right. No, C's identify as the shooter. I put him at the scene too. Because I said he walked up the uh, Puff's car first. Is that the Amir Muhammad dude? Exactly. He was in the documentary, right? I know you saw the documentary he was in. Go ahead. Um, they never arrested him? Or go- Bro, let me tell you something. Amir Muhammad, if they would arrest him, that means that he was, his friends were LAPD. Mm. So who placed him there? Who put him there? People who was a part of LAPD, right? They still responsible. You Mm. understand? Mm. They still responsible. Because look at this, bro. This is the the Peterson Museum. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? They faked the shooting on this side. Mm -hmm. They killed Big on this corner. Five shots went off. Mm -hmm. Five, six shots went off right here. Me and Tone, when we got right back, we turned around and got back there where Big was shot at. Mm -hmm. We take out after the car. We take Mm -hmm. out, we take out, and we drive behind him. We trying to catch him, right? Can't catch him. We in a government chip car Mm -hmm. and everything like that. When we turn around and get back, there's still no police there. Mm. Why? But and the firemen was there too because the, the firemen, firemen shut it down. The, the firemen shut it down. But the police was all on this side. Mm. Why no police ever came to this side when there's a shooting in a nine one one call on this side? And the name that we put out there is public record, so we not, you know, it's, it was public records. Everybody Man, I don't seen. Care yeah. nothing about yeah. no snitching and all that stuff like that. Yo, that's how they got us brainwashed. That's why somebody could come to your neighborhood, rape or uh, 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 rape, shoot and kill up somebody, and no one go, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. Crazy. Yo, you come to my block and do that. If I don't do something to you, it's gonna be a hundred thousand police right there. Make sure you ain't even getting out of there. I feel you. I feel you. Cause you dealt with a lot of online um backlash, people coming at you. And, man, listen and, here, man. That's small things. They can come. They listen. What you eat don't make me. Mm-hmm. You understand? So what you come, you coming at me don't make a don't make a difference. Cause I know the truth and I know what's going on. Mm-hmm. You wasn't there. You understand? I know what I feel. Mm-hmm. You understand? Listen. I've been totally honest about everything I said. I don't gain nothing from this. Got you. Nothing from this. But I watched that boy lose his life, man, for nothing. When we already knew not to go, not to be there. Now, everybody can sit up and talk about this about business. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was doing business. The same business he took care of in L.A., he could have did it in New York. What different business he did? Went to a radio station? I'm going to call in. Wow. What different business he did? How long was you out there again? Off and on, like, I was out there, like, off and on, like, two weeks. Like, one came one week and then stayed three or four days. Puff came back to the city. Then we went left and then we came back again. Oh, yeah, because you only was responsible for Puff. Oh, Puff, yeah. How long was Big out there? I think about, like, two weeks. It never went nowhere. Wow. But never I know him. That, that's that's his M.O., though. He, never went nowhere. Yeah, yeah. And when we get back to the thing, when I was explaining the biblical part of that, mm-hmm. when Puff took D-Rock the day before the thing... And he hung out with D-Rock, Sally Richardson, and all that stuff like that. They stayed going all day. I knew what was up. But I thought I had gotten D-Rock ear enough for D-Rock to be like, nah, man, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking my man to this party. Because I already told him. Ask him that question. I sit up there and smoke. I don't even smoke. Mm. I smoke the joint with D-Rock. Mm. I can say that now, cause I'm retired. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
I smoke. He said, he said, yo, Jane, that's a joint. I was like, man, I don't care what it is. I'm trying to let you know, brother. Mm. You feel me? Mm. I'm trying to let you know. If you could look into the camera right now and say something to D-Rock, what would you say to him? He already know. Mm. I ain't got to say nothing to Rock. Rock feel it in his heart. Rock know everything I'm telling him is the truth. Man to man, he knows that. He know even before we left Andre Harrell house, the night Big got killed. I said to Big, Lucy's, Tone, and D-Rock. These, yo, these dudes are trying, these dudes are going to kill us tonight, bro. Somebody going to go, 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 go die tonight. And he said, Lucy said, go ahead, Gene, with that old cop. You think you know everything. Mm. On everything I love, on everything I love. Ask him about that. Oh, they don't remember? That's a long time ago? Hmm. How, how Leave it alone? How much has this haunted you? I think it's, yo, dog, what happened was is that I had to hold it in because I was going through arbitration hearings because they been they was trying to get me on this for a long time. Got you. You understand? Just like, if you call, if if, if you call up there and say, yo, uh, parole officer deal kick my dog mm -hmm. and hurt him, they'll suspend me. Right? And you know what they're talking about the whole at the suspension hearing? What? The Biggie Smalls case. Wow. Because they're trying to get me to lie. But what happened was is that I never bodyguarded Biggie Smalls. Hmm. Biggie Smalls and them camp had no paperwork on me. Well, your paperwork was, was with Puff. Ah. Get it? Got you. Um, if you if you if you could talk to Puff right now, what would you say to him? I have nothing to say to him. He already knows. Yo, let me tell you something. I wasn't trying to get at Puff. Got you. I'm trying to let people know the truth. Don't lie and say you didn't know. Because Suge Knight tells you, y'all ain't got a problem with me, y'all ain't got no problem. That don't mean you got a you ain't you ain't got a problem. Mm. Uh when Pac was alive, mm -hmm. we ran into Suge. Mm -hmm. You understand? In back of the House of Blues. Okay. Pac didn't speak to Puff. Pac didn't care about Puff. But Puff and Suge spoke. Mm. You understand? Puff, Puff asked Suge, do we have a problem out here? And Suge said, I don't know no problem y'all got. You going to take that for face value? In L.A.? He mean to do In L.A.? LA. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. We had a news reporter right in between me, Riz, Puff, and Kenny. Mm. You understand? A news reporter right in the middle. Puff told me, listen here. I don't want to hear. I don't want you to ever hear you say anything about this. Mm. You understand? So you now just bumped into them, or was it secret? Meeting? We just we just bumped into them. Got you. You know, we was drive. We was driving down Sunset Boulevard, and we was going in the house by, by, behind the House of Blues. I guess it, <laughs> it was random. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So now, you take that for face value. You ain't got no problem in L.A.? Come on, he knew we had problems in L.A. They were still getting threats and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Bignum wasn't trying to go nowhere. We was going everywhere. Me and him. Mm. But see, what I was doing, I was calling my dudes. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Chaz. Yo, because Chaz was out there. All, all He did all events. And he got like anywhere from four to six guys with him. Mm -hmm. You understand? And when I traveled, you know, I would put five little extras, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, make sure. Because back then, you know, the airport laws was different. Mm -hmm. You could put your stuff in your suitcase and stuff yep. like that. Pre-9-11. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I would put them in there. See them out there. Make sure everybody was all right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'll call them, yo, we at this place. You say, all right, man, I'm going to be right there. So we can have extra. Did you see DJ Quick that night? His name I saw always, DJ Quick that night. Like, his name always comes up and stuff, yeah. too. And and DJ Quick, you know, he said it himself. He said, yo, I think they got one of them bad boy n They said they was going to get him. Mm. That's on tape, too. That's Yeah, that's that's public record. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, listen here, man. People can make like, you know, I didn't come up here, you know, you know, to to. I, I'm glad you're giving me this form to do this this show and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps. What 
I'm trying to get out. I'm not, you know, listen to me. I had a great time, a great experience with Puff. We travel, you know, the nation, the world, some third world countries and stuff like that. You know, did a lot of things. You know, stayed in five-star hotels, ate some of the best foods. And, you know, I had a chance to have a, a, a whole another experience in life. Mm-hmm. You understand? But I'm not going to let you lie on the dead. Mm. You understand? You know, I'm not going to let you, you know, and, and he did the same thing with Wolf. You know, he's a big part of why Wolf ain't here today. But people don't understand it. You understand? Why, why is that, though? I don't that's, that. a, that's Because there was two entities. Mm. You understand? You know, he feeding poison to Wolf about the BMF. Mm. And he feeding poison to, to BMF about, about, about Wolf. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, because I heard one of the BMF soldiers say, yo, uh, Sosa, this Sosa kid, he said, yo, um, Wolf was trying to extort or trying to, you know, take something from Puff and everything like that. And Puff was a friend of ours. Where you get that from? Mm. For make a conversation like, and that's on, that's on one of those uh, uh, M, uh, um, YouTube sh- okay. shows. Where you get that from, brother? Mm. You understand? Wolf told Puff, yo, I had over 300000 before I started dealing with you. I just want my money. He was trying to open up a, 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 a club in Miami. Mm. It was up for sale, one, two, three, or three, two, one. Something like that, by Lincoln Avenue, something like that. Him and John Sally, brother, and them, they was going to open, and another people, they was going to invest and open up a club together. He mm. was trying to get away from dude. Mm. You understand? But dude would have conversations with how strong and how he didn't need him because of BMF and what Meech was telling him. But Meech don't even know this. This is conversation they having. So now when Wolf and Meech get into something, okay, Wolf gonna like, yo, listen here, in the back of my mind, he gonna say, all these conversations I had with this dude, Puff about this dude, so I'm gonna show him right now. Mm. I'm gonna show him right now. Rest in peace, Wolf, man. Yeah. Um, also, you, you know, his daughter didn't know certain things, and I, I put y'all in contact also, yeah. um, Wolf's daughter, because I thought it was good for y'all to have a conversation. Um, so hopefully everything with that situation is, is, is um, cordial. And she realizes that you don't just talk about her father for views or anything. That was your friend. Mm, yeah. That was your partner. Well, first, your... well first of all, I, I, like, listen here. I was with parole officer. Oh wow! And I was Lil Wolf parole officer, and I've been to their house and their mother house and everything like that. Wow! You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, when he got off parole, we became, you know, close and cool. And you know, I I told you what he asked of me. Yeah, to do for her. Yeah. You understand mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, what he mm-hmm. asked of me. Mm-hmm. You understand? And I wouldn't have had that information if it wasn't true. If it wasn't true, because yeah. I wouldn't have known nothing about it. Got you. You get it? Got you. See, that's what happens is that if you have certain information, you have to know something about something. Somebody had to tell you something. I wouldn't have known that situation if her father wouldn't have came to me. Yeah. So see what and, and I want the people to know, again, when you first came out with saying some of this stuff, I was like, but then when I started doing my research of some of the things you were saying, I didn't take it off face value at first. I started listening and doing research. I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, that didn't make no sense. That didn't make no sense. I was like, yo, yo, he telling the f- truth. Yeah, you, but, but to me, growing up in that neighborhood, because you know I grew up, all of them, we mm-hmm. all from the same hood. I'm like, yo, it's somebody who know the truth, and you know the truth. Why doesn't the world know the truth? Mm-hmm. Because people deserve to know. And it's not even to down anybody. Like you said, it's not against one man. Right. It's just the fact that, yo, somebody lost their life and got taken out of this world. And it's like a big cover up, a big lie. Right. That's going on. And it's just, let's just move on with our life. It's, it, it starts with, you know, it, it starts with one person. And yeah. that was me. Yeah. You understand? Like, I couldn't die or leave this earth. And have all the information that I had and not share it with somebody. And maybe somebody else will pick it up and say, yo, listen to me. Let me look into this. Maybe it'll be on Lil C's heart one day and say, yeah, Gene did come to the car and told us. I went to Puff first. 
Mm. Puff said I ain't have to go. If I'm the only gun, if I'm your only gunman, I'm the only person, why would you tell me I don't have to go to this Peterson Museum? So do you think he knew they was coming? He knew they was coming, but he I don't think he really knew who they they could have fooled that he was gonna get. Somebody they, he he probably noticed somebody say they told him something about somebody from Bad Boy gotta die tonight, y'all. And he also said that to you 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 said on one of your tapes that he don't care who died. He just Yeah, won. he said that. He 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 said that his exact words and listen, nobody believed me until my man who was right there came on my show on, on phone and said mm-hmm. said the same thing. Puff said I don't care if Pac got to die. I don't care if Big got to die. Suge Knight can go to jail all I care. I'm tired of living my life like this. Something got to change. Now, he heard that from somebody. Mm. You can't, you, me being an investigator, me being an educator, me being around in the streets, you understand? You can't tell me he didn't get that from somebody. Who told him that? Mm. Pac got to die. Big got to die. We going to send Suge Knight to jail. Who told you that? Because you repeated it as you had heard it from somebody. And because of the incident and you ran that night, you was feeling it. And sadly, it all came to fruition. All came to fruition. So, Gene, um, yo, man, I want to thank you for coming through. Let's plug your YouTube. Tell me your YouTube one more again. Oh, man, it's the Gene Deal Show, Cooking and Conversation. Uh, we do the Uncle Gene segment where I tell you my thoughts about life in different situations. Um, like like just today, um, Doggy Diamonds came to the world and he said that he had apologized to me mm-hmm. uh, based on what he had thought. Mm-hmm. You know, and we all, you know, everybody have the right to, to think what they want to think. And, and, but sometimes we need to not just look at the cover of the book, pick it up and read it. That face value, exactly. And that's what I said. I took things for face value. But then when I started doing investigation, I'm like, if he lying, somebody say he lying. Nobody said he was lying. I'm like, this is too big for everybody to just be like, something ain't right. They will. They going to start saying I'm lying. You know why? Why? Because it's going to grow. Oh, no, we grown with this right You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get big. Yeah. You understand? Then they're going to have to make questions on it. Then they're going to have to make me seem like a liar. They're going to have to make me seem like a bum. Crazy, like you crazy. crazy stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You understand? The old drunk yo, uncle. Yo, yeah. yeah, the Rolex ain't real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the everything ain't real. You yeah, understand? Yeah. You know, all that. You know, get out of here. Got you. Got I you. earned and I worked for everything I got, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I want to thank you for coming through. Shout Appreciate out you. shout out to MREC. Um MREC TV is his YouTube. Um Gene Deal show with Gene Deal. The book you you started it? Did you start it? Started it, man. Me and my man, uh, uh he's a he's a great writer. Uh he does movies. This is his first book. But thing. your story ain't over though. So how you yeah. start how you what's what's gonna be the timeline? Uh what do you mean? Like I'm just I'm I'm just talking I'm talking about up until the story's gonna be memoirs type thing? Yeah, just up until the, after Big's death, and then I know it's some other things that happened because uh, I was there, uh, and we ain't speak on it, but I was there when 50, um, 50 came to my house to get a vest uh, the week before they killed him. The Tried real to shoot 50 the, Cent. The real 50, no, 50 Cent. Got you. You know, Curtis Jackson came to my house before they shot him up, tried to kill him. Because you was cool with Chaz, right? Because Chaz, Chaz was Chaz. managing him at the time? Yeah. Wow. So, you know, that you've been be in a loop. I've yeah, been in a loop, bro. Damn. So, he, 50 knew they was coming for him? He knew. Damn. He knew who was coming for him? He knew where it was coming from. Got you. He didn't know exactly who would be the try to be the trigger, man. Got you. You understand? But he knew where it was coming from. So, you didn't give him the vest then? Oh, I gave him the vest cover. He had the vest. Oh, you know, you yeah, know, you yeah, had the yeah. pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they were a little too big for him because I was a two X at the time, and he was extra large. Got you. you. Know what I'm saying? Got so, you. Got but you. I said, yo, you can get somebody that you know. Yeah, you better tie this up. Do something, <laughs> something with it. Do something with it. But where? Got you. Got yeah. you. What's your relationship with Fifty now? I don't have a relationship with him at all. You know, uh, I seen Fifty when I was bodyguard Scott Storch. Got you. And he was doing uh, Candy Shop and some other song. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Scott was doing for him. We was in yeah. Dre's studio in California. Uh huh. And uh, 
we had a sit down. We just talked for a minute. He said, yo, Gene, um, I couldn't try to decide who was on who team. Because he know I was team Chaz. Mm-hmm. You understand? But I'm my own man. Mm-hmm. That's why I went to 50 when I when I felt a certain way that things was going to go down like it was going to go down, mm-hmm. I, I had love for 50 at the time. Mm-hmm. You understand? So I tried to let him know, and I was calling. He wasn't picking up. He wasn't picking up. Then he called me and said he needed a vest. He came, and I told him when he came, I was, yo, man, you got to watch out for yourself. These cats coming at you, Bowser. He said, yo, I got it. So you basically warned him. You know, yo, so I warned yeah, him. Yeah. You understand? So then... Um, my stepson was with me at the time when we, we was having that conversation. So my whole thing about it was is this, is that um, he was telling me, Gene, I couldn't decide, you know, who was on who team, who was this or who was that. So I left everybody alone. Because he also blamed Chaz for having something to do with it, right? Right, got right. You, so you. He, said, I, 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 he said, I left everybody alone. Got you. And I told him, I said, yeah, I hear you, brother. I'm always my own man. Got you. You understand? And it's going to be in the book how that, that dialogue and that conversation went, you know, to get us to that point. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it was something that was real deep. Give him, give him your social media, too. Uh, just uh, Big Gene uh, underscore 52. Okay. Five um, Deuce. Five Deuce. I'm about to say five that. Deuce. Yeah, you're about to say Big anything? Gene underscore Five Deuce. So you're on YouTube? My YouTube, Instagram, and Instagram. Man, I really don't know how to do that stuff yeah. like that. Man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh dear, yo, yeah. listen to me. Like this is new. I, yo, listen to me, man. People don't understand that I lost more money coming out and speaking on this stuff than I ever gained or I'll ever get. But you gained a piece of mind on yeah, yeah. I get, I get. Yo, listen. Here. A lot of these people on on social media on my YouTube channel, they help me with mine because I'm not going to sit up in, and sit up in front of nobody and telling my story and you know, like you. on no couch like that. Gotcha. But this, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, a lot of some some people on social media be like, "Yo, Gene, whoop they whoop blase this," and I listen and say, "All right, cool, that's good," and it's and, and it's helpful. It's and like you say, it's therapeutic. Uh, uh, but you get those, like you just said, your man said, you you get those other cats that's you know come at you crazy and everything like that. And all you want to do is, yo, come on, let's get on the elevator and go to the, to, yeah, go, yeah, to the yeah, yeah. go to the tenth floor. Nobody <laughs> want to do that. Everybody just want to talk because they got a mouth. <laughs> but yo, I'm Doggy Diamonds. We had Gene Deal here. Make sure you follow him on um, Instagram. Also, his YouTube will be in the description box. Make sure you follow him. I got to go there one day and get me some food. I really just eat a bunch of vegetables and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure he could scale some vegetables and stuff like that. And um, this is Doggy Diamonds TV. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube, Doggy Diamonds TV. Also, you hit the bell to get the notifications. Also, I'm on Radio.com with the podcast, the audio version of the show. So if you just want to hear the audio, you don't have time to watch the video, the full audio, go to Radio.com. Download the free app. It's in your um, your, your stores, your mobile device stores. Download that. Look for Doggy Diamonds. No filter. You'll get that. Also, if you're just on iTunes, get that also. I'm Doggy Diamonds. We out of here. Until next time. Peace. Make sure you uh, click subscribe to this on iTunes. Go to radio.com. Download the app. It's free. You can hit a podcast on there. You can see the video on YouTube, youtube.com slash Doggy Diamonds TV. Until next time, peace.